What would happen of the Kamaboko squad in the future? Will they become a Hashira? But first, we will first explain their history, starting off with Inosuke. So what is Inosuke's story? Well, Inosuke was raised by boars in the mountains. We all know that, but did you know his true past? Well, Inosuke and his mother were taken in by Doma into his cult when Inosuke was just a baby. His mother eventually found out that Doma was a demon and tried to run away, but they were cornered above a cliff. In a last-ditch effort to save him, his mother threw him into the river before she was eaten by Doma. After getting his own Nichiren sword from a random demon slayer and developing his own breathing technique, he meets Tanjiro and Zenitsu when he tries to attack Nezuko outside the Suzumi mansion right after he defeats another demon inside. We all know what happened, so let's go skip to the next arc. In this arc, he joins Tanjiro in saving the other demon slayers who were being controlled by the sister spider demon but all of them were eventually killed. He also tried to defeat the father spider demon but failed to do so. Luckily, just like Zenitsu, he also had a savior but who was it? Well, Gyo arrives just in time to save him. After fighting the spider demon family, Inosuke also meets the Hashiras. He challenges some of them to a fight, and like the boarhead he is, he just gets smacked. He trains with Shinobu and do you want to know a fun fact? Shinobu's name is the only one who didn't mess up, which just goes to show how much he respects her. During the Mugen train arc, Inosuke played a major role in defeating Enmu and saving the passengers on the train. Along with Tanjiro, they sliced off Enmu's neck and stopped him from killing the passengers. However, he was helpless as Akaza killed Rengoku in front of them, giving us one of the few scenes where Inosuke cried. Moving on, Inosuke also disguised himself as a woman in this arc, but if Zenitsu was the ugliest, what's Inosuke? Well, he was actually the most beautiful after they removed his makeup. Other than that, he fought with Zenitsu against Daki as well as saved Tengen's wives. With the dawn of a new era on the horizon, Inosuke joined the final fight against Muzan and his demons. He fought against Doma, the Upper Moon too, with Kanao. But, something shocking happened just before he arrived and this is another huge spoiler. So, what was it? Well, Doma killed Shinobu. After an epic battle against Doma and his Ice Blood Demon arc, they defeated him after Shinobu's poison greatly weakened him. After helping defeat Muzan and attempting to save everyone from a Demon King Tanjiro, Inosuke married Aoi Kanzaki and did Inosuke have any descendants? Well, he saw their great-great-grandchild, Aoba Hashibara, who was researching the blue spider lily. Next up, we have Zenitsu. Before the series started, what was Zenitsu's past? Well, Zenitsu wasn't raised by his parents and he usually got tricked by girls. One time, he even gave a girl all his money then she left him and he ended up with so much debt. But, how did he become a demon slayer? Well, the former Thunder Hashira, Jigoro Kuwajima, paid off Zenitsu's debt and trained him to become a demon slayer. In the final selection, Zenitsu is one of the four people who passed along with Tanjiro. Funny thing is, Zenitsu got a sparrow instead of a crow. But why? Well, sparrows in Japanese culture are a symbol of good fortune, and Zenitsu's name literally has the kanji for good. But this might just be a coincidence. What do you think? Moving on to the next arc, as mentioned before, he meets Tanjiro in the Suzumi mansion. He tried to escape with a boy named Shoichi, but they were cornered by a demon. While being unconscious, Zenitsu uses his thunder breathing technique to cut the demon's neck and it was amazing. While Tanjiro was busy with Kyogai, he protected Nezuko from Inosuke and the three eventually became friends. After their fateful meeting, all three of them arrive at Mount Natagumo where they get separated and Zenitsu fights against the brother spider demon. He managed to defeat it but he was on the brink of death but luckily a savior arrived to help him. Who was it? Well, it was Shinobu and she cured him from the poison, making sure this overpowered scaredy cat lives on to fight another day. Next, Zenitsu also received treatment at the Butterfly Mansion alongside Tanjiro and Inosuke. After they finished healing and training, they set off to a new mission. This mission was none other than the Mugen Train Investigation. Zenitsu played a vital role in the Mugen Train. As they were asleep due to Enmu's blood demon art, Zenitsu didn't even need to wake up and protected Nezuko and the passengers in his sleep. But he was powerless against Akaza as he watched him kill Rengoku and escape. As mentioned before, in the Entertainment District arc, he disguised himself as a woman and became the ugliest one and he also fought against the Upper Moon's six siblings. So how did he do this time? Well, Zenitsu also played a key role in this mission because he was the one who found Daki using his superhuman hearing and he also dealt the finishing blow. In this arc, we don't really get any information as to what he did, so I guess we just have to move on. As the final battle begins, Zenitsu then joins the final battle against Muzan and his demons, where he faces his senior, Kaigaku, who became the new Upper Moon 6. Now, he's pitted against an Upper Moon and the outcome might be a huge spoiler for fans. So, did he win? Well, he unleashed a new breeding form that he made himself called Flaming Thunder God. In one OP attack, he kills Kaigaku and joins Tanjiro in the battle against Muzan. 
After helping to obliterate Muzan and sedate Demon King Tanjiro, Zenitsu would live alongside Tanjiro, Nezuko, and Inosuke. So did Zenitsu finally find true love? Well, at some point, he would marry Nezuko and start a family, and would eventually have great-grandchildren in the present day named Yoshiteru Agatsuma and Toko Agatsuma. He would write the adventures of the Demon Slayer Corpse and their final struggle against Muzan in a book. If you like this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos just like this. With Zenitsu's backstory done, we will look at the life of Kanao and what her past looked like. In the past, Kanao was a quiet and emotionless girl who was adopted by Shinobu and Kanai Kocho. She was abused by her parents and sold to a slave trader, who made her work hard and constantly beat her, and how did this affect her? Well, she lost her will to live and become unable to make decisions for herself or even talk. After Kanai gives her a coin, she always flips it to decide what to do. In her first appearance, Kanao is seen as one of the nearly 20 participants in the final selection and is one of the four survivors with Tanjiro. She says nothing in her appearance and just stares at a butterfly. And want to know a fun fact? At this time, she was the closest to actually becoming a Hashira because she then became Shinobu Sugoko. In her second appearance, while accompanying Shinobu, she chases Nezuko around the forest. She then receives an order from the crow to spare her and bring her back to the Demon Slayer Corpse headquarters. In the Butterfly Mansion after the Mount Natagumo arc, she meets Tanjiro and the others, where she trains with them. This time, she started to develop feelings for Tanjiro because he has that good boy Riz. Kanao also learns to open up after Tanjiro tells her that she's now free to live how she desires. Moving on to the Infinity Castle arc, Kanao would witness one of the most horrifying scenes in her life. So what would that be? Well, Shinobu would be eaten by Doma in front of her very eyes. She'd fight Doma and was able to hold her own for a while and in a rare moment, show utter disgust towards him. While in a pinch, Inosuke arrives and saves her. They both eventually defeat Doma but Kanao loses an eye in return. After joining the final battle and defeating Muzan, Kanao injects Tanjiro the cure to turn him back into a human after he turned into a demon. She also decides to stop relying on the coin and make her own choices. She confesses her love for Tanjiro and they eventually form a family. And in the last chapters, we see their great-grandchildren in an era of peace. Next, we'll talk about the tragic life of Genya. But what makes his life so tragic? Well, Genya is the younger brother of the Wind Hashira, Sanemi Shinazugawa. Their father was murdered and their mother turned into a demon and slaughtered all their other siblings. But how did they survive? Well, Sanemi killed their mother and Genya blamed him for her death. After he realized his mistake, he joined the Demon Slayer Corpse but his brother rejected him all throughout the series. In his first appearance, Genya passed the final selection exam and got into a bit of trouble after he didn't immediately get his Nichiren Sword. After that, he later appeared at the Swordsmith Village. He fought Hantengu and we saw a side to Genya that was completely unexpected. Well, Genya doesn't know how to use breathing styles but he can eat a part of a demon and temporarily gain their abilities. At the end, he played a big part in defeating the two upper moons. Up next, during the Infinity Castle arc, he fought alongside the other Hashiras against Kokushibo, the upper rank one. In this battle, he made up with his brother but sadly things didn't end up the way they wanted and why is that? Well, Genya sacrificed himself to protect his brother, eventually losing his life, making him the only member of the Kamaboko squad to die in battle. Last but not the least, let's take a look at our MC, Tanjiro. So what is Tanjiro's story? Well, we all know what happened. Tanjiro is a very kind boy who lives with his family in the mountains. One day, his family was slaughtered by a demon and only his sister survived but she was turned into a demon herself. He struggled to restrain Nezuko and luckily, a demon slayer named Tomioka Giyu arrived and after a little bit of fighting with Tanjiro, restrained Nezuko and told Tanjiro to find the kanji Urokodaki. When Tanjiro did find Urokodaki, he mastered the water breathing technique and passed the final selection exam. But it doesn't end there. Tanjiro and Nezuko head to Asakusa where they accidentally meet Muzan who stirs up quite a bit of trouble. They also meet Tamayo and Yushiro, two demons who want to destroy Muzan. While they were with the two, they eventually fought against Susumaru and Yahaba. So did they win this battle? Well, if you actually watch the series, you know Nezuko and Tanjiro popped off and won. Moving on, the siblings arrive at the Suzumi mansion for their next mission. There they meet some pretty interesting people. Do you know who? Well, it's no other than Zenitsu and Inosuke. The group clears the mansion of any demons and Tanjiro defeats a former lower moon, Kyogai. This arc showed just how strong our main characters are, but will that be enough? Well, you should stick with me to find out, and there are massive spoilers ahead. Perhaps one of the most hype arcs in the series, the Mount Natagumo arc saw our main characters fight against the spider demon family. During this battle, Tanjiro unconsciously uses the Hinokami Kagura against Rui. The Lower Moon 6, and with the help of his group and two other Hashiras, they grasp victory from the jaws of defeat. So who were these two Hashiras? 
Well, there's Shinobu and Giyu, and personally, I think Shinobu has the better entrance out of the two. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. After their big battle, Tanjiro and Nezuko were put on trial because of course, Demon Slayers hate demons and Nezuko is one. However, they managed to convince the head of the Demon Slayer Corps, Kagaya Ubayashiki, to spare Nezuko. In this arc, everyone cried. You see, Tanjiro and his friends were on the Mugen train with the Flame Hashira, Kyojiro Rengoku. Inside the train, they were attacked by Enmu, the Lower Moon One. They managed to slice up his neck, but another threat came crashing down. Do you know who it is? Well, it was Akaza. The Upper Moon 3 and after a spectacular showdown with one of the best animations in anime, he managed to kill Rengoku but luckily, our MCs were spared by the sun. After the loss of their role model, Tanjiro and his friends accompanied the Sound Hashira, Tengen Uzoi to the Entertainment District where they searched for Tengen's wives and possible demons in the area. They disguised themselves as women and well, it wasn't pretty. Luckily or unluckily for them though, they found the Upper Moon 6 siblings, Daki and Gyotaro and another mind-blowing battle ensues. After a lot of struggle and more wounds, they eventually come up on top. This arc also showed Tanjiro's mastery with sun breathing and how he could put up a good fight against an Upper Moon demon. With two Upper Moon defeated, Tanjiro had to get a new sword. However, the demons weren't going to let that slide. Two new Upper Moons arrived. Upper Moon 5 Gyoko and Upper Moon 4 Hantengu. Luckily, Genya, the Miss Hashira Murichiro, and the Love Hashira Mitsuri were also there so an epic showdown began. Something interesting happened here and I think you might know. Well, this arc debuted the Hashira's Demon Slayer mark which boosted their powers and helped them defeat the two Upper Moons. Nezuko's immunity to the sun also appeared and this could lead to a whole lot of trouble and if you know, you know. Muzan begins his surprise attack and finds the Ubiyashiki estate where he fell to the Demon Slayer's trap. The final battle begins and everyone gives their all. During this arc, Tanjiro got his revenge against Akaza with the help of Giyu. Amidst their battle, Tanjiro awakens the selfless state to erase his presence like his father did in the past. As the final battle approaches its end, Tanjiro and his friends join forces with the Hashira and other Demon Slayers to put an end to Muzan. Because beheading him was impossible, they'd keep him busy until the sun rose and he'll disintegrate. However, before he would be defeated, he transformed Tanjiro into a demon. So how did Tanjiro's story end? Well, a cure that was invented by Tamayo successfully turned him back into a human. After the final battle, Tanjiro married Kanao and they made their own family. Years later, we are introduced to their great-great-grandchildren, Kanara and Sumihiko. But, have you ever wondered what would happen if the other Upper Moons were sent to the Swordsmith Village instead? This video will answer all of that for you and more.